Hey guys, how's it going? So this is going to be my video where I'm gonna share my design plans for my first offset smoker build. This this might be a little bit lengthy of a video, but if you're a novice, hopefully I'm going to share some things with you that you um, have not found before, or if you're you're not one for digging around in forums all day long to, to find little nuggets of information, maybe I can help you out and give you some resources and, and a little bit of information to help you out with your build. But let's go ahead and get into it. So overall width is seven foot, one inch. Overall height is six foot four and a half. Now this cook chamber and firebox, this all came from one pipe. So we loaded this up into Lauren's truck and he went ahead and he took it down to his work and cut that down with a torch. He cut me off a 20 inch firebox and then he cut the door opening and he left just a few tabs uh, for transport. And originally we were gonna uh, weld the hinges on first and then uh, finish cutting it. But we got some advice over on Smoker Builder and um, basically advised don't, don't do that, go ahead and cut it all the way off and then make your adjustments to your door because it's going to be a real pain to do it if you put the hinges on. So you left me with a 20 inch firebox and a 55 inch cook chamber. And I didn't come up with those numbers on my own. I actually used the calculator that uh, that they have over on smokerbuilder.com. So if uh, if you're putting together your own pit, go ahead and cruise on over there and, and use that calculator. It's gonna help you come up with a much more efficient um, sizing for your cook chamber and your firebox. And so this, this firebox uh, at 20 inches in length is actually 109% of the recommended size. And typically over there, I've seen uh, folks say that you know you don't really don't want to be anything over 105 percent or you start to lose some efficiency I, I could have gone down to 19 inch and I would have been 101 percent and I would have gained an extra inch over here but I kind of rather have that extra inch on this side just as a, an additional space um, for that heat before it hits that cook chamber it's probably negligible but I figured I might as well put it over here because I don't need it over here and then on this cook chamber, I'm going to have a 47 inch door, just a four inch gap over here. So it's going to be a pretty heavy door. This is a three eighths inch thick uh, pipe. Um, one thing to note on this smokestack here. So I use the calculator to figure out what my smokestack needs to be. And I'm, again, I'm looking for a pipe still, but I'm looking for a six inch outer diameter pipe, which will probably have about five and three quarter inch inner diameter. So I went ahead and plugged that in there. And what it gave me is, uh, I think it was about a 16 inch height. Now, for you novices like myself, when it gives you a height, it's talking from the top of the cook chamber to the top of the stack, okay? It's not talking about from the top of the collector or the elbow or anything like that. It's, it's saying from the top of the, the uh, cook chamber to the top of the stack. And with that, you have a little bit of room uh, to wiggle uh, as long as you go up with it. If you go down, you're not going to get enough draft. So evidence shows that the higher the stack is, the more draft you'll get, which it has consequences. You don't want too much draft. That's uh, probably a video for another time, but you don't want too much draft. Let's just leave it at that. But as long as you have this baffle, you can choke down how much draft you'll get at any uh, given time or any given day or cook. So as long as you have that damper, you, you can oversize it. I wouldn't undersize it, but you can oversize it. Now with the wheels here, I didn't take the recommendation that I got from smokerbuilder.com. I specified to them that I estimate this pit is going to be about 800 pounds. And I have to roll over some rocky terrain uh, to get it to where it's going to live. When I did some research though, I was looking at other backyard pits and most of them come with wheels that are very similar to this. But also, you know, the price on those golf cart wheels and tires is pretty high compared to what I spent on these, which uh, was 80 bucks or just a hair over 80 bucks round trip. So for the price difference, you know, that $500 to um, the $80 of, of these wheels. I'm just gonna buy um, some plywood or, or even lay pavers. That way, if I ever have to roll across that path again, that I'll have a much smoother, much more um, easy surface to roll this on. So that's why I made that decision. But I do thank those guys over there for that recommendation. I think for most folks, if you're pulling in and out and you don't have a way to, uh, to not go over a rocky surface, you're definitely gonna wanna take that golf cart tire recommendation. All right, so over here, we got the throat cut out. And again, I, I didn't come up with this on my own. Uh, Pete over there on smokerbuilder.com, he's got a calculator for this. I actually used the wrong calculator initially and he called me out on that and I appreciate that, Pete. Um, so make sure you're using the right one. But whether you're doing uh, a pipe to a pipe or a tank to a tank or, or whatever the situation may be, he's got a calculator for you over there. So um, go ahead and check that out. Now, one of the, the design aspects that I added here is I'm mimicking something that is on Aaron Franklin's commercially available barbecue, which is a grease drain right here, and it's always open. And so there's there's somebody over there on that forum that is building a clone, and through testing, they've found that this is actually actively pulling in air 
during the cook. So this draft is, is sucking in some air. And the thought is that while it's doing that, it's expediting the air rise here. So the heat is getting pushed up because the cold air is swirling around here and it's it's uh, it's making so there's there's better convection going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and include that in my design. If it doesn't work, you know, worst case scenario, I cut it out, put a ball valve there like most pits have. Over here, we got the uh, firebox door and inlets. And this is just a big question mark. I know roughly what size I can go, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do exactly on here or what kind of inlet I'm gonna do. But again, there's a calculator for that. Up top here, previous video, I was wondering if I was gonna do a top and a bottom rack. And I figure if I make them both um, slide out, both top and bottom, there's really no consequence to doing that top rack. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This upward angled throat baffle, I'm actually not going to do that. I wanna see what happens with this drain spout and having the uh, the throat up here near the uh, grate level. So we'll see what happens with that. And if I'm not getting the results I like, then I'll go ahead and do that upward baffle. In my last video, I was showing you that steel woven mesh for, for the grill grates. So that's what I'll be using. And then since that last video, I picked up some inch and a quarter 10 gauge steel angle iron. And uh, that's what I'll be using to hold it all together. Um, also gonna include a digital probe port, probably over here, a la the uh, fat stack smokers. And then I, I, I don't know why I didn't illustrate it, but I'm definitely going to do a collapsible stack because when, you know, when rain comes in, I want to be able to fold this down and throw a tarp over or a custom cover or something. Um, if I have a constantly erect stack, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to cover as well, especially if, if wind hits. All right. So let me switch over to my other screen here. So this is my cut list. Before I went any further with any kind of design, I want to make sure I had the materials on hand because it's been a little bit of struggle to find the materials. So anything in green, that's kind of excess material. These red marks, that's where I'm making a cut. And these black, that's where I'm joining two pieces together. But as you can see, I have uh, plenty of material to do what I've sought out to do so far. But if I start doing some of this other stuff here that I have as question marks, I might need to get some more. So this was more for me just to, to have things planned out and know where I stand with the uh, materials. So water pan filler. I know at the very least I want to mimic what they got going on over at Fat Stack Smokers. But I think I, I have another idea that, that might work out and, and make that kind of an autofill type situation. Uh, with handles and hinges, I haven't even thought about it. I asked Lauren early on if he'd be willing to take that on because he's a pretty artsy guy. and um, you know I'll let him get as wild or mild as he wants with that, but he's going to handle all that stuff for me. Um, door gaskets are only a question mark because I'm not sure what size I need yet and I'm not sure what brand and, and whatnot. So it's, it's, it's going to happen but it's a question mark. Um, firebox basket, that's a question mark for me because I'm not sure I even need one. I see a lot of pits with and without them, and I have yet to hear anybody say in a pit without it that they really wish they had it. Um, this shelf and work surface thing, um, I'm kind of excited about that because most pits you'll see they'll do like a, uh, a fixed in place or no shelf at all and then um, sometimes you'll have an upgrade option of like a folding shelf and for me i want a little bit more i have a fairly small space and so i want something that does a little bit more so i have some plans for that i don't want to give anything away just yet so if you're interested in sticking around on this journey uh, i think i'll have something fun for you guys to to check out um let's just go ahead and, and talk about the cook surface over the firebox so let me switch back to this view um so this is 20 inch by basically 12 inch wasted space. In my previous illustration, I had like a park style barbecue, charcoal barbecue that I was going to set up here. And I might still do that. If I get lazy, the worst that I'll do is just a flat top over over the top of here so I can sear some steaks or uh, or cook some burgers while I'm, I'm smoking something. Um, but I'm also tossing around the idea of maybe doing a warming box or even a, a little miniature Santa Maria grill. So I'm not sure. I'll, I'll talk with Lauren about that as we get building and, and whatever he feels like he wants to take on um, and, and provided we come up with a cool design and, and execution, we'll go ahead and, and look at that. And then last but not least, the cook chamber door lift assist. So that's, again, that's a 47 inch wide door and I'm estimating it's gonna weigh right around 95 pounds. So it's a pretty heavy door and it would probably do well to have a little bit of assistance. A lot of guys will do a counterweight over the top and I don't like the look of those. But early on when I was talking to Lauren about this build, um, he had another idea in mind and I haven't seen it done anywhere. I'm sure it's been done, but I haven't seen it done anywhere. Uh, so stay tuned for that because I think it's gonna be super cool and um, I think a lot of people could probably steal something from it. But that's my build in a nutshell. I hope I covered everything that might be um, interesting to, to other novice folks like myself that are building their first pit or or even their second pit or whatever. But yeah, I hope, I hope you guys are enjoying the journey so far and just take care of yourselves and, and stay healthy. So I'll see you all later.